It's the fighter and the kid. Had to run it back, cause we back at it again. Yeah, we gon' keep it moving like it's never gonna end. When it was Brendan, when it was Brian, when it was just talking to friends. We got the kid Callen on the left with the fighter on the right. Ay, had to do it right, cause we coming at you live. Back with the team, had to keep it OG. Must see TV. Yes, we did, cause we back at it again. It's the fighter and the kid. This is really the fighter and the kid. We're out. Come on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Guy yeah, that's a lot up. of firepower. Five hundred yeah. mil back in the day. Back in those days, it's like yeah. three let's billion. Run, let's, yeah. run, let's roll. So I figured that was a little bit of a problem. So so, so when when uh, Ronald Reagan declared war on organized crime and Giuliani said the same thing, he basically said, "If you're a member of an organized crime family, I'm I'm declaring war on you." What did you guys think about that? Because you guys, I remember when the Fulton Fish Market caught fire mysteriously. Well, I mean, it, it was a problem. You know, when you have multiple agencies like that, you fuck them with the government. You got state organized crime, the federal organized crime bureaus, different uh, states putting their, you know, people, prosecutors together. It's a war. And uh, it's hard to fight them. They make the laws. So... You're fighting people that uh, that don't know, lose. Gonna, that don't lose. They don't lose. The, the government? No, no. The FBI I mean, doesn't lose. Someone has beat them. Right. <laughs> well, right. They, have a 90, they have a 98 percent conviction rate. Yeah. But why do you think that is? They have the best lawyers. Correct. They have the best investigators. You know, I did time. I did 22 years in prison. So I was with so many guys, especially black guys. Mm -hmm. Turned around and said, "Sammy, what do you think on this case? I think you're dead." Why? Because you got some broken down fucking lawyer. Yeah. And uh, your prosecutor's an ex-cop, an ex-drunk. And uh, they have a team of magnificent lawyers. They have the FBI as their investigators. And they have a 98% conviction rate because they make the laws. Yeah, the system's so that's flawed. what you're up Most people yeah. think that's they're like, smarter than... That's most people, But Sammy, most people think they're smarter than the FBI, but the FBI's got some smart... Especially organized mm -hmm. crime, yeah. right? They got some well, smart... Well, and they, they, the laws, I mean, they have bugs. Yeah. They have people, confidential informants. They got everything going for, for them. So you're going into a, a fight... You know, I'm looking at these guys in this room over here, all these big motherfuckers that... <laughs> I mean, I'm going to fight them, the both of them. I, I, I've got to be out of my mind if I think I'm going to win. Yeah, I'm going to fight, but... Find the government. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's the same, Ron, the same thing. Yeah. I got I to gotta give you that intro for people who don't know, because for me, people don't understand. My generation, Sammy the Bull Gravano, the man sitting here, was the underboss. That means he was the number two guy in the most powerful organized crime family in the United States. And that was not a, that was not a matter of dispute. The boss of all bosses was... Castellano, who sat at the head of the commission and all the other crime families from all over the country would sit under him and take orders from him. And Sammy was the underboss of the Gambino crime family and the guy really who and started to become the guy who called all the shots because you were the guy that, that ultimately everybody seemed to be respecting, wanted to be around, and it became evident to John Gotti that you were probably going to take over in one way or another, right? Yeah, he, he became uh, very leery of it. John Gotti was a complicated guy because he's an egomaniac, he's a narcissist, and uh, so everything meant something to him. <laughs> uh, he was concerned with a lot of things with me after we took over. Frankie DeChico was the main player, got blown up four months after the Castellano hit. But after a while... I'm going to give you a quick story that a captain in the Genovese family came to John in the club, and I know it because guys were around, and they says, John, you know how to pick him, meaning that I'm the underboss. Mm. He said, uh, why? He says, Sammy, he says, you can't do a job in the city no more unless you get a fucking wink and a nod from him. Became a super powerhouse. Yeah. Now, 
me, if somebody told me about one of my people, I would say, that's great. You need something done? I'll talk to him. Or I'll get it done for that's you. That's good asset. Tremendous asset. But he looked at it in, as a narcissist would. Jealous. He don't want somebody to be his equal. That's his ego, right? And I, I right. you know, I, I'm... I would say if if you go back and you look over like all the history, all that stuff, a lot of the kind of the downfall of the the entire organized crime, a lot of it was due to Gotti's ego. When you Absolutely. think about the moves he made as far as getting into the drug business, it's like you but know. Listen, listen to how. But Luciano yeah. even said like we don't want to get involved with drugs because that's that's what attracts the attracts the fat. Yeah. Like dr the drug business, we don't need to do it. You guys are right. doing all this stuff. He want to get involved with the drugs, and then also. You know, you guys want to fly under the radar. He has two thousand dollars suits on. He's doing the interviews. He's on the cover of Time. You know, it's like this. He wanted to be this celebrity, so you're getting all this attention. So to me, I know people want to. The, I think the easy out and the way the media portrayed it is, oh, Sammy is the reason they fell. I'm like, man, I would argue is Gotti. I think he was too wild and his narcissist and ego is the you reason. You know, after I up. after I left, <clears throat> I was with the government for quite a while. I was living in Quantico a military base that they had me put there and they told me John was a blessing oh yeah I said what do you mean he gave us the entire mafia all five families the whole thing the whole on a silver platter because the recordings at the because no. of the recordings because of the way he dressed yes. the news media but also he had everybody together. come kiss his ring yeah. like every every once a week they'd have to come to the rape nightclub the whole the entire every everybody who was made and come and say hi on the street. But that's so the ego FBI, thing. Yeah, but the that, FBI but is the, like. Chiki, yeah, chiki. but that. But they're not going to bust him off that. But the Raven no, Club. But they the, know who he is. No, know who that, he didn't care about that. B. The, the Raven Eye Club was bugged, and they knew it. But he would still go upstairs and talk about it. That, yeah. that's a huge issue. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying that so many of these guys. The FBI, correct me if I'm wrong, Sammy. Didn't they didn't they didn't even know who they were. But until they had, they came out. And now you're kissing John. They were like, "Well, that guy's a, that guy and that guy." And they See, just if a guy on. wasn't an important guy, we know he was there. But if he wasn't important enough that he was just doing his thing, he's under a captain. You're never going to see that guy. He's not a well-known guy. He's not going to go sitting with the boss. What this did was take those guys who were never even really known. We knew who they were, but not the government. Now they're going there and reporting, like he's saying, kiss the ring. Not actually kissing the ring, but they're coming in. Now they're grabbing <clears> me, and they're telling me, Sammy, bro, I, 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 they don't, this is, I, they never had a picture of me. Now I'm walking in, I see guys with cameras, the news is here, the government is here. What are we, what is he doing? Yeah. Talk to him, please. I said, I did, I did. He's the boss, whatever he wants. I, I, I did talk to him. I grabbed his brother, Jeannie, Gene Gotti. And I said to Jeannie, I said, Gene, go over his house at night. You're his brother. You're a friend of ours. He was, he was actually a captain. So I says, tell him that all the old times, everybody's complaining. This, this is insane what we're doing. He said, Sammy, I did that. And what did he tell you? He said, when you want to talk to me about mommy or the kids or people, you're my brother. Come and talk to me. You want to talk about goes in Austria, go to Sammy. Oh, wow. I said he told you that. It's an ego. Yeah. Thing. So so listen to the story. Listen to how Machiavellian Gotti was, guy. It, it's crazy. But I'm gonna let's talk to. I was telling him a story. I'll tell you the story that uh, when the guy with the Genovese people said about the you, you you can't do a job unless you get a wink and a nod from Sammy. Another guy came in, a captain from the Colombo family, and said, John, I was at Tatley's last week on Tuesday. Sammy does his books and meets his guys and other people. And I went there. There were 60 fucking guys there. Made guys, captains, underbosses, <laughs> union bosses. This guy is a fucking powerhouse he's become. Now that struck John in a way. Hmm. He's doing a lot of work. Mm. I'm sending him on missions. He wants to take me out. He could take over tomorrow with the power that he has now. So he's trying to undermine me. That's the tapes he got caught on. And he's telling Frankie Lacasio to go out basically and tell the captains, Sammy lost his mind, bro. He's killing fucking people, taking over their businesses. He's killing people, taking over the unions. Both of them not true. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because 
You can't just kill your underboss if he's liked, if he's loved. He's bringing in money to the family. He's doing work. Now, what makes it even stronger is that he's sending me on hits to get things done. As the underboss, you stop that at the captain level. Yeah. As the underboss, I'm going on the streets. So you guys have the hit. He tells me, Sammy, go with that. Make sure it gets done. John, I'm the underboss, bro. I did that. You know, I'm up on a whole nother level now. Go ahead. Take, take, you got you to gotta go there. Get this done. Okay. So I go. Now, you two guys, when I'm not around, you're just talking, and some guys got caught on tape. Oh, my God. This fucking Sammy ain't just sitting on his fucking ass giving orders. He's on the street with a gun with us. He's doing work. They love you for that. Yeah. And he, see, John forced that situation. He tells him about So that. when I come into the club, you guys are sitting there. You jump up. You see, hey, Sammy. Yeah. Because you love me for what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm not just sitting on I'm one of you. Yeah, they respected it. Yeah. I'm getting the respect. So that's where this all created. He created it basically himself. And then all my ways, I guess. And so now he's starting to spread rumors that I'm doing this thing because he has a plan to take me out. But it's so silly because you're such a big earner, right? Because so, yes. if you're making so much money, you know, and obviously that's where his ego narcissism comes in because yes. you're making him so much money. Yeah, but, but two million a year. It, it don't matter because he's making millions and millions and millions. So what's, when you're making five or ten million a year, what's the what's difference? Two? One million yeah. a year or less. But, but uh, the important part is now he's starting to worry that I could kill him and take over. Mm. Now, were you thinking about that? Be honest. Oh, no, absolutely no. That wasn't never, in your head. Never, never in a, never in a thought. Why? Why? Because I. Why would I do that? Yeah. We took over the family together. Me and him. It's us against the world. Frankie the Chico died. I didn't want him as the boss originally, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah. yeah. Let's do one at a time. Yeah. 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 So let's stay with where we're at right now. Yeah. He wants to do it. So what's his plan? And I got to give him this. It was ingenious as a mobster. It's Machiavelli to the T. He turns around and he wants to get rid of me. But he can't because everybody would just say, if he could kill him, then we're all nothing to him. Yeah. So what is he doing this and putting these phony stories out? Then he says, Sammy, Frankie the Chico, who I love, was killed. And you always thought it was Chin, was behind it. Vinny the Chin. Vinny the Chin, he was the boss of the Genovese family. Um, I think you're right. I got a little information. Take him out. Music to my ear. <laughs> Music to my ear because I loved Frankie the Chico. You're close with him, yeah? Very, That's super that, yeah. close. So tell me how you're going to do it. it. Tell me how you're going to do it. I'm not going to go through the whole story. It's no. too long. Yeah. But I'm going to say that I was setting it up ready to go. And uh, what's his plan? It took a long time to come out tapes, this, that, people who cooperated before I know it, like, to this point. So I go kill Chin. I kill Chin, I come back the next day. How'd you make out? He's gone. I got it. Good. He immediately kills me. Chin hated him. He gets rid of Chin. He gets rid of his problem with me. Yeah. Two problems. He goes to the Genovese people. Sammy, I love the guy, bro. He lost his mind. You could ask anybody who's killing people, taking over unions, taking over this. Then he came to me that he killed Chin. As much as I loved him, I had to kill him. I killed him. How about that? Savage. About that? Savage. Savage. It's savage, but it's <laughs> ingenious. It is. Because he gets rid of both though, of us. Yeah. Well, it was part of his downfall because he couldn't never keep his fucking mouth shut. Or his ego. And then also, you know, he was ratting on tapes about you even before you were and then also you know you guys have a code where you don't kill people outside the business and then you know tragically his son gets ran over by that neighbor and even if you do an accident that the neighbors the kid is on a bike <coughs> shoots in the middle of the road the neighbor runs over the kid kills yep. the kid yeah you know what happened to that guy he disappeared yeah he killed him yep. tortured him yeah. tortured him yeah killed him well, he didn't, but you don't, he didn't do it. He gave it to his well, crew because right? he went to Florida with his wife. That's right. And they called him. He's like, I'm in Florida. That was his alibi. That, yeah, that's Because right. he did. And yeah. his crew, whoever did but it, still, wasn't you don't, me. But. but still, his orders to kill this dude who made yeah, a mistake. Yeah, yeah. But he's not, he's not in your business. So that's already he's breaking the rules. So the media wants to pretend no John what. Gotti always lived by the code. But he was breaking it way before it. 
Yeah. yeah. Many of times. That's right. Oh, yeah. But, but I mean, it's forget codes and everything. It's an accident. Yes. It's a fucking accident. You can't kill somebody for an accident. Imagine I get up, you step on, I step on your toe, and you beat me after that. I'm still alive, but yeah, I don't want those problems. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't want those. Don't problems. beat me to that. No, I'm no, not going to step on no, your toe. Hey, man, I don't want any problems. Sammy goes, Sammy goes. Well, I don't even know. Maybe you want to shoot this thing with me. All of a sudden, you're taking me. To the camera. All of a sudden, I fucking disappear. I don't know. How do I know this isn't a hit? You set me up with everything. <laughs> the camera crew, everything is fake. Do you, do you like, still ever worry about that, Sammy? No, no, right? But I, 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 I was telling the the girl there, yeah, Peyton, that it, th how it comes back to me, it's stuck in my brain all the time. I said, we got out we, of the plane, we got in a truck, there was cameras, there was directors, lighting guys, sound guys, the whole nine yards taking pictures, everything is beautiful, and we get in the car, and we go to Manhattan Beach, and we're going to go to the beach, and this and that. They get my girl, and they take her in one direction. And they're taking me in another direction. Suspect. No, it's suspect. Here's, here's the thing. I think this of immediately the perfect hit. Yeah. They took her. They'll put her over there. I go to a meeting. Bye-bye. You never see me no I'm more. thinking the same thing here, Sam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, it worked uh, out, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, But I'm saying it's a perfect plan because here's what he does. He's got witnesses. <laughs> He's got her as his witness. No, yeah, they had cameras. It was a whole crew. Very John Gotti. His crew, his crew yeah. is witnesses. You never know. Yeah. Now he goes to the hotel and he gets three witnesses where he dropped me off at the hotel. He left in the car, the people say, and sent me one up to his room. Now, sometimes you wish you, he put Perfect a bullet. Perfect. That time you, Perfect sometimes head. you wish you put a bullet in the back of your head because did he force you play volleyball? No, no, we didn't do any volleyball. <laughs> no. We didn't do any volleyball. We didn't know volleyball. <laughs> I didn't let him sit behind me in the car, though. I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. so, I asked him, I go, I, we were talking about, like, I, I want to know, because you were in the hole, solitary confinement for six years, six and a half years. Think about six this. Six and a half years. They oh. put him in the, like, you're alone, bro. And then in, in the wintertime, you get one hour a week to go out in the yard. I'm sure the food's great. Yeah. You're so alone. He was so desperate. He grabbed this nurse's finger just to talk to him for a second. My question is, how did you speak to yourself? How do you fucking yeah, stay the mental sane? mental toughness yeah. to get through that. How did you not go crazy? I would have off you myself know, in three minutes. <laughs> yeah. I was asked this question a lot of times, but I'm going to answer it. Hey, B, let's take a little break from chatting with Sammy, the legend. Let's take the a little bull. break. It's the, the bull. bull. Hey, we got the bull in house. I'll tell you what, I'm grabbing the bull by the horns in Fort Wayne, Indiana, dude. <laughs> Are you? July 14th. Exactly. You're grabbing the bull yeah, by the horns uh, uh, in Indiana? Uh, uh, you're doing a little, uh, yeah. little, little stand-up in Fort little Wayne, Indiana? Little wise guys, come on out. Oh, July 14th. Uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana, July 14th through the 16th. Okay. And then San Diego, Laugh Factory, downtown nope. San Diego, July 21st through the 23rd. More bulls out there, too? Good. There's bulls okay. in San Diego, okay. dude. Okay. And yeah. I'm also grabbing the bulls by the horn in Baltimore. Really? Yeah, same with the bull. All right. Grabbing by the horns. All right. All August right. 4th through the 6th, Baltimore, Appleton, Houston, Boston's all on there. All Thickboy.com, get you some tickets. Because I'll tell you what, now if you like watching my little TV show called- uh, uh, um, Got it? <laughs> wow. Best of. Wow. Called Best of. You go watch that on YouTube, but forget all that. <coughs> That's a lot of fun. We got some fun stuff coming up. We got Brookfield, Wisconsin. You, if you're in Milwaukee or anywhere around there, Grab dude, the bulls. I'm grabbing the bull by the horns out there. I'm going July 21, 22, 23. I'll be at the Milwaukee Improv. Now, there's actually going to be bulls in Austin. There are definitely yeah. bulls in Austin, Texas. Talking about Cap the ladies cities. at your show, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cass City's July 28th, 29th, 30th. They opened up. I'm excited. Nashville, yeah, Tennessee. Some fun ones, dude. Zanies, August 26, 27. It says 25 there, but it's actually 26, 27. Then I got Spokane, Washington, Spokane Comedy Club, September 22, club. 24. I want to talk about UFC. Is there a way to bet on the UFC? Dude, there's definitely a way to bet on the UFC. You can watch the fight campaign this Saturday live on Thick Boy YouTube. We got a monster lineup coming for you guys. We got Trevor Wallace, Oof. the YouTube sensation, the beast comic. We got Josh Thompson. We got Luke Rockhold. We'll all be there live for UFC 276. You can watch that on Thick Boy at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific live on Thick Boy YouTube. And you can watch and make money with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting podcast partner of the UFC and they have a heavyweight offer this weekend's fight with a special parlay for all the listeners and viewers of Fire and the Kid. For the fires this week, my picks are Izzy, Suga, and Barbarina. Woo. He's fighting Robbie Lawler. He's the only slight dog there. I think he's a plus, uh, minus 105. It's a great freaking uh, pick. 
but all three have to win. And then all you got to do, just head to the app right now under the UFC page, check out my picks, bet on it, and ride along with your thick friend here. Right now, all customers can place the same game parlay for Saturday's fight. If it hits, you double your winnings. Mm. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code FIGHTER. New customers can bet $5 on any UFC 276 fighter to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what. That's code FIGHTER this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports brand partner of the UFC. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. My question is, how did you speak to yourself? How do you fucking yeah, stay the mental sane? mental toughness yeah. to get through that. How did you not go crazy? I would have off you myself know, in three minutes. <laughs> yeah. I was asked this question a lot of times, but I'm going to answer it. That we all have no idea how much we have in us if something that we can't control, like a plane crashes and we're stuck on a fucking island. Yeah. We have, you have no idea how much you could withdraw from your body to, to survive and to do certain things. And, you know, but being in the hole like that, I mean, it was the worst time of my life, six and a half years. I just, it was incredible. But I did, I knew they wanted to break me. Yeah. And that was my mental frame. So I did sit-ups, I did push-ups, I did crunches. I talk to myself, and I call it the ADX strut, would walk around the cell talking to myself, answering myself, and trying any of everything. I had one visit while I was in the ADX. My wife came down. She's my ex-wife now. And she came on a visit, and I went there, and uh, it's a booth. I go into a booth. She's on the other side in a booth. My side faces the president. Her side faces those machines and stuff and they came with lunch they opened the the slot pushed the tray in i got it and i says hey there's no uh, utensils they closed the slot eat with your hands all right i said deb go in the machines and get what you want you have to talk on a phone the glass is so thick you can't hear it over my head there's a camera looking at her over her head, there's a camera looking at me. So I'm sitting there and I'm eating a phone on my cheek, talking on, and eating with my hands. And she's talking. I, her voice blurred away from me. Not that it was, I couldn't hear it. I, my, mentally, I said, look what I'm becoming. A total fucking animal. Mm. She's sitting there. I'm in a cage, she's in a cage, and I'm eating fucking food with my hands, and I don't even have nothing to wipe it on. I says, I, what a mistake this fucking visit is. I hit the buzzer a little bit. The female guard came up. What is it? I got to go to the bathroom. All right. Put your hands through the, the slot. I put my hands through. She cuffed my hands. I come out. She takes me in the hall. I walk down the hall. At the end of the hall, there's this chicken wire, like, you know, regular. Yeah. Around this area and a bowl against the wall. That's it. No barriers, no nothing. So I went in there. I uncuffed. She uncuffed me to a slot. And I went in. And I says, uh, could you go down the hall a little bit? She said, I have to stand here and watch. I said, I don't have to take a piss. I have to take a shit. P please, could you go down the hall? I have to stand here. There's cameras there. I, I can't walk away. It's the first time in my life I shit in front of a woman. It was so fucking, I was demoralized. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. I mean, I never felt like that. I was so humiliated. I was... I was literally sick to my stomach, and I, I never did that in my life. I, I didn't feel between eating with my hands and now this, I didn't feel like a human being anymore. I felt like a total fucking animal. And did you have regrets of the lifestyle at that point? Well, when I left and I got back in, I got in there, I got the phone, I told my wife, I said, listen, babe, you spent about 2000 with airfare, hotel, you're going to be here for two days, don't let anybody come here and don't come back i don't ever want another visit here again don't come back 
She says, Sammy, you're getting one call a month. One fucking call a month, and they're on the phone, they're listening, they, they can shut you down. You, you, you got to have a call. You got to be human. And you have kids at this point, too? Oh, I got right? kids, yeah. Yeah. They always had kids. So that was it. I never got another visit. I told her, please, just don't. I didn't explain to her what just took happened when I went to the bathroom. And uh, I'm married. I had girlfriends. I never went to the bathroom like that. No. In, in my life. I would ask for a male guard. Hey, can we get the male guard? Yeah, here right. You rip can. This thing you're not going to ask for nothing. No, no you're not, not going to give a shit. No, they, Just like I, I told her. Huh, I, yeah. I, I, you know what that? You know what the matter of that story is? Huh, I was going to take pay. a shit. I figured she would walk away yeah, anyway. Me too. Be a but she human, couldn't. Man. But she's I mean, switch I out with Big Gary. I don't think she's happy about it. No, she don't want to watch you take a shit. No, her job sucks too. Yeah, yeah. Both. It was hard for her. Shitty deal for everybody. That's a shitty job. I mean, no pun intended. Yeah, that's no pun intended. And what he's talking about now. I, I became so hungry for conversation that a female nurse came. She, I, I, I liked her. She was friendly. She was a nice woman. Seemed like a nice person. She was talking about a letter that my daughter had sent. And she was had the letter in her hand. And she was, your daughter's a good writer. And she was talking about this, that, and the other thing. And uh, she handed it to me through the bars, and I and I got it, and I was reading it a little bit, and she was talking to me about it, and uh, she says, "All right, I'm gonna go," and I have to give her the letter back. When I gave her the letter back, she took it with one hand, and she said, "I'm gonna go." I don't even know what made me do it. I, I swear to God, I'm trying to think what made me do. It. I had no idea, but I grabbed her finger. I gr I went to grab her hand, but I grabbed the finger. And I said, I begged her not to leave, to talk to me. And uh, she said, Sammy, there's cameras all over. I know what you're going through. If they see you hanging onto my hand, she didn't try to pull and fight because they would have saw that. Yeah. She said, they'll come and beat your fucking brains in. I know what you're going through. They're overdoing it with you. Please let go of my finger. And I let go. I said, I wasn't trying to hurt you. She said, I know. Do push-ups. Do sit-ups. Meditate. Fuck them. Yeah, that's, that's how good of a person she says. Yeah. Stay strong. I will come back and forth and talk to you. Make it. Don't let them break you. What, can, there's no, there was no way your lawyers could say, this guy's in, I mean, he's in the hole for six fucking years. <sighs> The government doesn't care. No, listen, Ch no. Chapo's in there already now. He got he's going, crazy. He's, a, he's going crazy. Wait, who is? Chapo, El Chapo. They give him, I don't think he gets an hour outside. He is. No, they'll give he, him an hour. He, he's going crazy. They, yeah. His yeah. wife, uh, who's in prison now too, but she submitted thing to the, the prison. Like He's legit going insane. Of course. And they go, yeah, how do you think this works? Well, you right. think he can run a drug cartel and kill thousands of people and yeah what do you think it was a four but that, seasons that, that would be cruel and unusual punishment though we do have laws against that right isn't i mean if you did the fuck should we do give him a, a double no bed? no no but i mean i think that no kill him there's that's, that's what i say kill no, him. if that's how you feel kill him in other words you can't say uh, uh fuck him he's a criminal and 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 in other words we have no values no morals you you can't call him a criminal when you're going to do that to him well, and that's why we don't as have much torture. Of a criminal as he is. But that's the argument mm -hmm. against torture. I'm not torture. saying you. I'm talking no, the system. I'm with you. Yeah. But, but, but that's the I'm argument kind of against the society. Side, that's the argument against torture. The argument against torture was made specifically for that reason. So which we're was, just like them. It's, it's also. It's them. also. But it yeah. also corrupts the society. It's very, very difficult. It's. It's why. It's why. Like we all would like to torture some people, right? If you left it up to well, but the idea of retribution. Is is a very different thing than the idea of taking somebody who's a danger to society and putting them away, and the idea against cruel and unusual punishment. I mean, back in the day, they would torture you; they'd do terrible things. Yeah. But the argument becomes isolation for a human being over that long a period where you actually lose your mind torture. is torture. Well, right? let me bring, let me bring one up because here this came up too. Yeah. Uh, Qu uh, Guantanamo Bay, I think it yeah. is. It's on Cuba. Yeah. 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 We got terrorists who are blowing us up, killing us. The most 
horrendous way. We catch them, we put them there for years. They eat military food, which is pretty damn good. Mm. They have military doctors, which is pretty damn good compared to prison. They gave them a soccer field. Yeah, they ain't right. They go out every day. These were Americans. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what they did. You're going to treat them because it's compassionate and mm-hmm. it looks good for the rest of the world. Correct. Right. But you're going to get our people and do horrendous things. Now, a, a serial killers or somebody who does really weird shit. Yeah. Hey, I'm, a, I'm for it. Kill them. Pedophiles, yeah, kill them. Kill them. But you but you, can't other tor- you can't torture people and then you're feeling sorry for them to so the world don't think you're a maniac, but you're doing it to your own people. Yeah. That's like... Russia has got some real tough fucking prisons. Oh, yeah. They're not going to show you what they're doing to those no. people. No. Because they don't want to look like animals. Yeah. yeah. But they could just look like animals to their own people. That's the point. Mm-hmm. You can't become them. Mm. You can't not... I hate a pedophile. But I'm going to become a pedophile. Yeah. Right. Just to, to, to punish him, I'm going to become him. <clears throat> so what would you do, Sammy? <clears throat> Kill him. Just take him out. Take them the fuck out. Save a lot of tax out. dollars. Tax dollars, a whole bunch of Agreed. things. And it, it, it'll be a more of a deterrent. Not that you're going to baby somebody for 20 fucking years and, and we're going to pay them a fortune just to feed them and yeah. keep them healthy yeah, and do all these fucking things. If he was that bad off and all these things, take him out. Take him the fuck out. Some Agreed. people don't belong breathing anymore okay. now and <laughs> yeah, i agree I'm, I'm with saying, that yeah. i don't care if it was me and if you thought it, I, I shouldn't be breathing take me the fuck out i would rather you take me out than do fucking 30 years or six and a half years seven oh, years too. old give me the firing squad right if i have to shoot in front of a right. female how long do you think out? they'll right. keep el chapo in solitary like that for uh, forever he's forever like, oh the answer's forever sir the answer's forever because he's escaped three prisons we can't that's oh. he's got rabbit on his in other words he's escaped three prisons you ain't getting out of this place no, no. but but those because are it's underground those yeah. are mexican things and, yeah and everybody's like in shit. on it so but th- when you got rabbit on on your on your jacket rabbit means you're gonna run did you guys ever they, deal did you guys when you were running the gambino crime family did you guys deal with other the families from other countries yes you did Yes. The Irish, right? In Philly? You dealt with them a lot? No, they were they just did. We we dealt with a lot of people. I don't I, I was locked up with a guy named jo- Doggerty. He was a uh, 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 an IRA member. And uh, I did time with him. He was a good guy. Um he was in an English prison and he broke out. On the way out of prison, they killed a guard. One of the, I think they killed two guards. One of the guards was Margaret Thatcher's nephew. Ooh. Jeez. So you killed the president's nephew. Whoa. You're going away. And he got away. He came into the United States, and the mafia hooked him up down in Manhattan in a bar, Irish neighborhood, and uh, got him a job. But that, uh, they found him, and they arrested him in the United States. And he fought extradition, and because they would have tortured the shit out of him. So he fought extradition for years. I was with him. He was even writing articles for a newspaper for a while. Below MCC, they have Doggerty Square. They named the square after him. He was doing a lot of time there. I think it was Pre- President Bush, the, the father, the first one, who, even though he won all his decisions, shipped his ass back at Yeesh. night Whoa. to England. And they... You know, he's probably better off. They threw him in a, in, in a, in a, in a prison over there. Yeah. There's certain prisons that they have there that the inmates run the thing, the IRA. There were so many of them. I don't know now. This was more yeah, years they, ago. They, so. they, had that, they had it locked down. Because yeah. they used yeah. to say, if you were Irish and you were, if you were Irish in those jails, the British were going to mess you up. So what they would do is if you were an IRA guy, they'd go to the head guy, the British the guy, the, the English guy who ran the prison, shot caller, and, and they'd go, that's your address, right? Is that your address? That's the home where your, your right. kids live in? Yeah. Yeah? Good. <laughs> you you fuck with us, yeah. we'll blow it to smithereens. Did they, they, they want, want better. Here's what they did, too. They wouldn't take orders from the English guards. In other words, they only had, in other words, the guard had to go, he's the boss, the, uh, the head IRA guy. They would go to him. This is what we need done. Okay. He gets his people, the Irish guys, to get those things done. That's power. They won't take 
orders from them. So they would compromise with the boss, yeah. and he had a little bit of power to get better, better food, or better medical That's attention. Power. But he, they had to go to him. You couldn't go to me as his underling and tell me to do it. I would tell you, here. Yeah. He's, I'll listen to him. I ain't listening to you. Sammy, were you ever worried in prison they were going to try and get you in there? Even not even uh, mafia business, but just in general. I got along in prison so fucking good, it was amazing. I get along with people. Yeah. I was, I have Odin on my arm. The, the ABs allowed Mary me brother. to put that, the Aryan Brotherhood, because I became very friendly with them. A lot of times they would ask me for structure. How did you structure the mafia? What's the structure? I would tell them, what do you want to know for? Your ABs, win the mafia, what's the difference? Well, you lasted hundreds, if not yeah. thousands of years, so your structure is, yeah. nobody ever had a structure like you people. So I talked with them. I used to play chess through the walls uh, uh, with this guy, uh, Snyder, Paul Snyder. They used to call him corn fed, real, real big, muscular guy. Not with weights or anything, just natural like a fucking farmer. Real muscular, yeah. but all natural, no working out, no nothing. He's just a beast. And I got friendly with him. He had four life bits. He was nobody went in the yard with him. Nobody would go in the yard with him, so he couldn't get in the yard. Because he would just kill dudes or what? Well, he four he went in with a sentence, three other life sentences were killing people within the prison system. Nothing to lose. You know? Yeah. So he's got nothing to lose. Yeah. He just got another one, he don't care. So nobody would go in the in the yard with him. And he was so fucking big, this guy it was, you know. So anyway, he's telling me about it and we're playing. Because I had asked him, why don't you go in the fucking yard, bro? He said, somebody's got to sign me in or I can't get in. So nobody was willing to sign, uh, okay. Jesus. And that's all it's got to be. Yeah. yeah. What's the fuck? I said, all right. I called the lieutenant. I said, listen, we're going to go out tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, put me in the yard with him. Cornford. Are you sure, Sammy? You know his history? I know. He's got four lives. I know all about him. I know about it. It's cool. He's my friend, I think. My friend, I think. I well, think. I, don't, I don't know for sure. Then you go out there and he's doing cartwheels? No. When they take me out the next day, he got out first. He's in the back of the yard. He's got his shirt off. The sun is beating on him. Oh, my God. He looked like a fucking goddess, i tell you the truth. I mean, I said, you know, I'm, I'm putting, I got my hands through the thing they're uncovering me i'm saying i wonder if this was a mistake yeah <laughs> so i said but fuck it i mean it's done now so take the cuff off because in there they tell you if you're in a fight they'll scream i'm gonna use my own name gravano hit the hit the ground you don't answer gravano hit the ground they're gonna shoot you with rubber bullets yeah you're never gonna hear it the third time if you're using a weapon or you're doing something too vicious and you don't hit the ground they'll use the regular bullets they could do it either way. And you're not, you don't know what they're going to do. So I'm saying, well, if, it, if I could fight a little bit and hang in there a little it's while. It's going to squeal out. You know, maybe they'll hit him with some rubber bullets or something. Probably so the anyway, real I get it animal. off and I start walking in the yard towards him. And he's walking towards me. He's got a little bit of a smile on his face. I'm a little nervous. So I'm going to say the truth. He's 6'3". Yeah, I mean, beefy. He's, and he's beefy and he's nasty and he's killed a lot of guys <laughs> killed a lot of guys so I'm Sunshine. walking up with his bare fucking hands yeah, when Shot, I get to him son. he grabs my head at almost by my ears and pulls me into him and gives me a kiss on the head I love you oh he says I would have never gotten the fucking yard if he gave him a solid it. a solid and we were like that <laughs> was he a oh, good chess player very good really he's a, and became a great artist Really? Of course, I, yeah. He, he, yeah, but he eventually got out of there, and I was in prison with him later on. He's done some of these tattoos on me. Oh, he's yeah. done those, those are prison tats. These are all it's prison good work. tats. Yeah, all prison. yeah. These are all my old chest, my back, every fucking thing. And uh, so anyway, he, he was good with me. And then I talked to him one other time. Well, I've talked to him all the time, but I found out that they were going to hit. Our familia is a Mexican mafia gang real dangerous and they were going to hit the boss black guy was going to hit him they were going to take him in the yard they were going to stab him or whatever so i found out i told corfin he said the the guy is right in the cell below you 
which is even with the yard. When you go down to the yard tomorrow, bang on his window, tell him about the hit, and tell him that I know about it too. Why would he do that? He was, first of all, he's friendly with the, the uh, La familia. familia. Those two groups were, were pretty tight. Okay. They're, they're different groups, but they respected each other enough that they were tight. Okay. So I go down, and I bang on this guy's window. So I said, bro, I found out tomorrow when you go in the yard, I make it like this. You're going to get hit. I know, I know. Fogarty knows, and, I, you know, and I'm giving you this little message. I know, Sammy, bro. I already know about it, but I appreciate what you're telling me. Yeah. So now I, I'm friendly with the ABs. And now he tells all the uh, familiar guys, all the Mexican guys, and I'm friendly with them. So when I go uh, past them and when I'm walking out, say, hey, Yeah, you're good. I'm good. I'm yeah. good with both groups. They're the most dangerous two groups in the prison system there. You're good. I'm good. I'm fucking good. But I didn't do it for that, but it worked out. So I never really had many problems in prison. Then it became real to people. I tatted up. When I went in, I was 55. I got a 20-year sentence. I tatted up and did certain things for a reason. I figured I'm going to get hit in the joint. Yeah. Whether If it's a fight, I'm now getting up in age, I'll probably lose. But I'm going to kill whoever is in the fight, especially if it came where you won the fight, now you kick him in the face, you better kill me or I'll kill you. And people knew that in prison. They said, this guy's for real. He's not racist. He's not this. He's not that. He's easy to get along with. He don't think his shit stinks like John Gotti. Yeah. So I got along with guys. I didn't deal with gay shit, dr drugs, gambling, money. So those are the places where you really get into problems in prison. You know. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, so yeah, absolutely. You mind your own shit. Yeah. All of that shit. Or... Or the television. That's why sports, I'm not that good at it no more because they're always arguing over the sports. This guy wants this. That guy wants that. They're arguing. Fuck the you know, sports. Shank the guy who wants Jerry Springer. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know. yeah. Right. They sort of, the television is a problem. Uh, and uh, drugs, like I said, is a problem. So you just stayed away from all of it. All of it. Yeah. I but I, but it's interesting because even before you, you did time, like you've always had respect. Whether it's in prison, right. whether it's in the the you know the mafia, there was just a respect thing when it came to you. Like everybody had respect for you. I always did, and I still do, till today. I respect people. I respect people who are bigger than me, smaller than me, different things. I, like they tell said, me how you tell me how John would always have you come along, because you could read people when they were lying. Yeah, John. Well, John. John would like always bring Sammy because I, I was, I was like good at time. reading things and people. One day he tells me, he says, Sammy, I got a big meeting. Some guys coming down, business shit, heavy stuff. Sit by my side and tell me what you think after the meeting. I said, all right. So I was sitting there. And the guy is talking to him and he's telling him all this stuff. And John is talking back and going back and forth a little bit. And uh, meeting's over. He says goodbye, says goodbye to me. He leaves. He said, what'd you think? I said, there were certain times he was lying to you. How do you know? I said, when he came in, he was all smiles, slid back in the chair, he was real comfortable. When you said this, a asked about ABC, his whole posture changed. He stiffened up. Mm. He, his hands grabbed the edge of the chair. His knuckles turned white. Yeah. He was squeezing the chair. Super uncomfortable with your questions. That little jawbone moving, he was teeth, was clenched. Intense. He was nervous. And then he calmed down. And those things went away. Then you asked him, X, Y, Z. Again, his whole body shifted. He was, the tension, I could see it in his face, in his eyes. Even a little bit of sweat was coming above his lip and his tongue was coming in and out like a fucking lizard. His mouth was dry out of fear. 
What an asset. Again, what an asset for John Gotti to bring you yeah. along to so, spot this so, show. Let me tell you, this, you this part is funny God because this part is yeah. funny because now <laughs> two weeks, three weeks, he finds out everything I told him was right. Yeah. Just about, not everything, you know. So now he's gonna, every time he's going to sit down with somebody, Sammy. It's <laughs> just all this bullshit. You know, I don't know, man. Sit with this. Now, how did I learn that? I don't even know how the fuck I learned it, but I'm dealing with bosses, underbosses, guys who are lunatics, guys who are good guys, guys who are everything, with life and death situations, business situations. I've learned that for self-preservation. Yeah, I street born smart. Well, I was going to yeah, say, every time, every time, street smart, you're born with right, Every yeah. time, he goes, we're walking in the building, and he goes, how do I know you're not fucking taking me to a room right now? I go, you don't. Fair point. I said, I said every time you went to a meeting when you were in the mafia, you don't know if it's the last time you're walking into that room. That, that's always a possibility. No, no, yeah, it's always a possibility, but I, not for me, because it's a possible. And, and if you're worried about it, I'll tell you why you're worried about it. Because you you're a cop. You knew you fucked up. And yeah. you know you did something. You cheated your partner. You did this. You did that. It's guilt. It's your own guilt. Yeah, that's why you feel like so that. So you're walking around. I wonder if he knows. I wonder if he found yeah. out. Why does he want to talk to me? Why does he want to talk to me alone? Why does he want me in the back room? That'd be it's exhausting. your own fear. Yeah. yeah. It's you. It's I, your I, guilt. I, to this day, I hate it. If I get a so call, I never, goes, call I me. never fucked anybody or lied or bullshit. I don't do that. I mean, I kill people, but I didn't do that. <laughs> in other words, it, you it kill was, bad people. It was never a th yes, a business move. In yeah. not business moves, but closing mm -hmm. Austrian moves. But if which if we're gonna make a deal, I always live up to my deal with you. Yeah, you know, some guys will say, "I was dealing drugs, and we made ten thousand. Nobody knows that I made this ten thousand. So, or well, maybe one or two guys know. So I'm gonna go to the boss." And let's say it's a 50-50. But I'm not going to give him 5000 I'm going to say, we made 6000 It's yeah. three. Yeah. So that little bit of cheating that you did, you're always in the back of your mind. Yep. I wonder if... Uh, Somebody told him. He knew about it. I wonder if he told him. I wonder if this ever came yeah. out. It's That's your own guilt. So if you don't do that, then I didn't walk you're around good. with guilt. You don't, you don't miss the life? Maybe let's take another little break from chatting with Sammy the Bull. I'll take a little break if you want. I don't care. Sometimes there's no bull. I'm in Fort Wayne, July 14th to 16th. <laughs> there's you no are? bull. Because because in I'm gonna be in Milwaukee uh, at the Milwaukee. Just give him one day, dude. Yeah, no bull. Here. Milwaukee uh, Fort July Wayne, 21, Milwaukee. 22, 23. Get you some. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. But listen, I'll tell you where you need to get you some. This Saturday, UFC 276 is here. Watch the live Calbass Fight Command on Thick Boy YouTube and make money with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official betting partner of the UFC. They have such a great offer for you guys this weekend. They got a special parlay for all the listeners and viewers of Fire and the Kid. Because listen, they're doing a three man parlay. Your boy picked them. My picks are Izzy, Sugar, and Barbarina. Good picks. All right. Good picks. Izzy, I think he gets it done against Cannonier. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he goes to the judges. Then my boy Sugar's going to step up to the plate and beat Pedro Munoz. Woo! And then Barbarina, listen, Barbarina gets it on the first round. If he doesn't, could get a little dicey for him. He's a minus 105. He's still the slight underdog there. If you bet on the three of them, it's a parlay. They boost your odds, all right? Just head to the app right now under the UFC page to check out my picks. You'll see it under Bread and Chubb. Bet on it and ride along with your thick friend. Right now, all customers can place the same game parlay for Saturday's fight. And if it hits, you double your winnings, daddy. Ooh. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use promo code FIGHTER. New customers can bet $5 on any UFC 276 fighter to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what. That's Code Fighter this Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the UFC. Minimum age eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. DraftKings. Now let's get back to Sammy the Bull. You don't, you don't miss the life? Yeah, because before you answer that, I was going to say, like, you know, a lot of people talk about the downfall of the Gambino crime family and all that stuff. To me, in, in the movies, too, like, whether it's Goodfellas Casino, I don't watch it to the end. I like the beginning. Blow, I like the beginning. Like, when you guys, it had been so fun. I think you guys in like that rape the, in your the social club there and just doing your thing. You guys are in suits, and then I listen to your podcast and you're talking about one time you and John Gotti went to this restaurant or bars and there's girls there and John sends you over to pick up the girls. They're pretty girls. You go over to them, but their dads or something were in another crime family, so you're like we can't do this, John. And it's like I, I mean, obviously you guys weren't short on girls and people that liked you because so much power. I bet it was so fun, man. Besides, there like, killing all the time. Was de there was definitely times that, are, that it's fun. That's why the people love the mafia. Correct. People 
legitimate guys. There's guys who are tough guys who are not killing people, are not in the mafia. They're tough guys, and they love that because it's they almost that's almost in them themselves. Yeah, could be in you a little bit, yeah. him or a guy him. It could be in anybody, really. I don't know. So that no, no. Well, uh, well, well, I don't know. <laughs> all right, well, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whatever. My man. I think it's in everybody. I, everybody, I think it's everybody. in everybody. Yeah. And that's what makes the mafia so lovable to people. They kill themselves, so they don't care about that part. But their life, the, the, the running around, the broads, the cars, the drinking, the gambling, the joking, sitting in the car. The suits. The car. Everybody's got that little bit of taste of... You know, breaking the rule, fuck the government. You know, you, you after a while, and you're, you're bonded, tired you're bonded of getting with people. fucked by the government constantly, constantly. So, more or less, you know, the hardest cases for the government to win are tax evasion cases because the jurors, every one of them, says, Jeez. I like this guy, fuck the government. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could fuck yeah. the government. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, they could relate. They can relate to mafia guys. They can relate to some of the stories, the fun stories. But there's a lot of bad stories and there's a lot of good stories. I feel like just the bad stories get told, though, and like the, the fall down the mafia. It's like, man, to build that empire, that business, like if you guys would have done it legally, I mean, you're talking one of the greatest business of all time. Well, yeah, the amount of money but you, you guys can't made. do it legally. Legit, he, yeah, was making, he was legit making, just off legit business, he was making 700 and 50 grand a year. Um, no, a month. No, he was making 45 grand cash a, a week. That was illegitimate, but his legit businesses were almost a million. No, and, and, and with this, like my thing is, is you come to a point where you guys are making so much money. Does nobody say, "Hey, I think we're good"? Yeah, exactly. Like, wh like, why wouldn't Pablo Escobar, when he's worth whatever they said, twelve billion dollars, at three billion, like, I think we're good, fellas. The fella. juice. Let's go and shut this yeah, down. You see, being in, the, in, being in the mafia is totally different. See, he's got, he's dealing with an illegitimate profit, a product, drugs. Period. He has to know when to stop. We're dealing with a lifestyle. Now, when, if we were dealing drugs, you could tell the guy not to stop the life, but why didn't you? You made enough money with the drugs. Why didn't you stop? Yeah, why keep going? Oh, right. But it's, but it's the mafia is not made for the money end of it, even mm. though there is a money end. You don't go into that. You don't kill for money. There's a lot of things you don't do for money. Money is in our God, totally. We, want, we all want to make money. We all have, have an edge in making money. Uh, you could do legitimate things where it does help you. Yeah. Like you open up a bakery, right? And uh, you're a made guy. And I'm your captain. Hey, bro, he just opened up a bakery and he's doing this, that, and the other thing. Now, uh, listen, tell your family, your friends, everybody, go there. So you, uh, a legitimate guy opens it up. He's got to be putting out good shit for the neighbors and the people in that area to buy. All of a sudden, you got 100, 150 customers coming in buying who don't know how it is. Yeah. Even if somebody says, I, I don't like that bread all that much, and I'm your captain. Good. And then feed it to your dog, but yeah. go buy it. Yeah. 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 He's, he's our brother. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's just so strange. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a, a weird, lifestyle. It's an extreme lifestyle in a way. But, uh, but I think, too, another point uh, is why uh, when Brian said you were coming on, I was happy. Because, again, I listen to your pod. I think, too, like you've always been family first. Like you would take, you know, do your mafia business during the day, but you'd come home and you'd be with the kids. Like oh, you're a good dad. I, I lived two lives, for sure. I was a good father, a good husband. Even He's talking to I his cheated. son. He was talking even, to his son today. Even though oh, I cheated, but I was a good husband and a good father. And I'm uh, right now. I'm a good father and a good grandfather. Yeah. And uh, and uh, but I was always a good mafioso as well. That was my life. You and it wasn't one of the just stealing. Right? It, it wasn't just stealing or money. It was my heritage. Yeah. I'm Sicilian. I go back. Yeah. It co it comes from Sicily. Blood, yeah. So this is like my. It's it touches all my family. Not the the bad part of it, but the heritage part of it. Yeah. So to me, this organization means something. It's not just a gang anymore because I was in gangs, but that's bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's me as a, you know, uh, it's yeah. bullshit. But when this became, it's part of our heritage. You know, so the Irish, when they look at it, they have a heritage. Mm -hmm. You know, the island and the English took over and they sure. fought for their freedom and all these bullshit things. So Irish guys look at it, you know, in a, in a, in a way like that. Not every group. 
Some groups do, but the mafia is just dedicated to that. And dedicated, in other words, when I look at it in my neighborhood, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, and I'll take the whole fucking Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, that's my neighborhood. That's my people. I don't give a fuck who's in the people. You could be Irish, you could be Italian, you could be Chinese, you could be black, you could be green. Those are my people. I don't want you fucking doing stupid shit in my neighborhood. And they accepted and now, you, right? Like they knew what you were doing. They still oh, absolutely, you. the whole neighborhood then. Because you, you know he moved. He wanted to get out and move, and he moved. And tell me if this is right, uh, Sammy. You moved, and the, the neighbors down the street didn't want their kids playing with your kids because he was in the mafia. Yeah, and Where'd you now, move, Sammy? Where'd you move? Were you I in Pelham? that known. Oh, you were now. But they knew what he was, yeah. you know, so they're like, oh, these kids can't, because his kids yeah. want to play with these kids down the street. Where was Castellano? Was he in Pelham Manor? No, he was in Staten Island. Okay. He was on uh, Toad Hill, okay. where those yeah. are all the wealthy yeah. houses. Yeah, Toad Hill, yeah. I, I was on, I was in Bull's Head. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's a regular neighborhood, blue but collar you people. you moved down, right? And then but you're then like, oh, I you got to move back. I was making so much money, I moved to Toad Hill. And I got a house, what he's talking about. And, uh, you know, I was out a lot. So one day I come back and I says, how's everything going? We just moved there. She says, they won't they won't play with the kids. The kids hated it. Damn. So the kids didn't like it. I said, well, what do you mean they wouldn't play with the kids? Who? The house down the block. Um, Barnes and Nobles. The guy who owned Barnes and Nobles lived down the block. Oh, wow. So I said, He's, they're not allowed to play with our kids? That's what they, they don't want our kids playing with. I walked, I, I walked out of the house, I walked all the way down the block, it's pretty far. And I knocked on the door. And sent me the bull. The wife. The door. The and, wife you're, and you're Mr. Barnes. Yeah. Sell the, books. the wife, the wife Barnes. came out and she says, yeah, could I help you? I said, I bought the house over here. I'm Sammy, Sammy the bull, you know who I am? Oh yes, yes, yeah you know who I am. Because you're not allowing your children to play with my children? Because of me. You want to know something? Get the fuck out of my way. Get your husband. Get your fucking husband to come here. He's reading a book. <laughs> so, <laughs> and finally, I mean, it was... I, I, it's kind of scary. I, 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 yeah, well, it was scary. Oh, I'd shit my pants. It was right, scary. Right? Oh, my kids will play with the kids. No, then oh, the guy sleepover. came to the door, and he said, what happened? And I says, she won't allow the kids to play with my kids because I'm a gangster. Bro, you know what? I don't want my kids playing with your kids, but I want you to move. Sell your fucking house and get out of here. He said that to you? I said it to oh, him. Oh, gotcha. He said it to me. He would have been dead. It yeah, would be, it would have been yeah Mr. Barnes. He would have been number 20. Hardcore, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I tell him that bullshit and whatever. And then he's apologizing. And then I said, Sammy, calm the fuck down. It's not the guy. It's the woman said it. Yeah. So I said, listen, pal, I apologize for what I said. Tell your fucking wife. These are kids, bro. They got nothing to do with me, you. Let them play. Kids. I'm not bringing the kids on a hit with me, let for them, God's sake. Let them play. Let the kids play. Exactly what I said. Let them play. And then I went back. I was calm. I told my wife, get real estate we're going to sell this house and go back I want to go back into everyday slummy people yeah, I, want to, who, who, who broke. Yeah. I, want, I want to be back over yeah. there I don't yeah, want to be up here it's a different here. thing it makes yeah. you feel because bad I, yeah, yeah. Feel like but, shit. it's not me I don't care if they never talk to me but Tim, did, didn't you my, threaten the neighbor too wouldn't you like you'd be ashamed didn't you, didn't you threaten him? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, listen, he's going to be ashamed I, if he went missing. I think it's worked out wait, for you. Wait, when did you do and that? And then he realized, when did like, you do that? Because that guy's not part of the business. Sam was like, what am I doing here, dude? Oh, you, you did the that with the here. Barnes & Noble guy? Or? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Barnes got dealt with. Oh, yeah. you did? You said that. Be ashamed. Yeah, yeah. That's be a ashamed if all these books burned down. That's scary as shit. Yeah. So, See, we were talking about how you can't be a gangster anymore. Like with cameras and the way shit is now. It's just different. You have to move different, right? Yeah, you can't threaten people with violence now, right? Yeah. I mean, you can, but... Peyton, yeah. show them the 38. She had a big... She's your head. She's the one who carries the gun. She's the one who carries the gun. She's the one. I assumed I fucking knew it. I knew it because she was so quiet. <laughs> oh, you got her doing the dirty work. I her. <laughs> It'd be funny if she took her I, wig off. I'm like, this not a fucking... That's just a hot-looking guy. You ever see that movie where she takes out two guns? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking She's Sammy. Go. He's always behind. He's always got one step ahead of you. The, the Johnny Key story, to me... Is one of the greatest stories I've ever heard in my fucking life. The way you, the by the way, I out. told you, by the way, everybody, 
I, you know, I did this best of, and we're doing this podcast. I've been trying not to sound like I'm from Brooklyn, but every time Judging I'm around you, I, I start nuts. talking like I, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, but I'm not. So just in case, there, there is a little accent there because I'm, you know, you kind of catch the, yeah, that that energy. Yeah. Now, but the Johnny Keys thing is the fucking craziest. Like your your details. Here's what I like. This is what's interesting. You had to get the guy in the van. So you say, I'm gonna stutter. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna miss my I'm gonna. I'm going to stumble a little bit. But and set that it way, up because the reason they're getting yeah, Mr. Where, Keys is yeah. because he was in the So John, another, John Keys was, was the hitman's hitman. He was, there was a war going on, right? Yeah. You go and pose as a lackey, as a jerk off, as a, as a guy who's just like a, a bitch really, you know? And he has to go, tell him, just tell him how you have to go through the gauntlet of the guys. I just signed the contract with the Johnny Keys. I can't tell you that. But <laughs> you're gonna, you I know you're going to be a little Because they might be doing a little something called a movie about it. Yeah, Just the other thing, Sam. Did movie. you ever get sick of telling these stories? No. Like it, when, he goes, no, when no. you were Jimmy Keys, no. are you like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, sick. it's the same story. A lot of times I, I, it does get a little rough. But when you don't I have to tell it. You don't have to tell it. When I started telling it, when I started telling these stories, it was almost like a release valve. I live with these Therapy bottled. Fun. Yes, I live with these stories bottled up in me. When I started, I was just talking to a microphone, doing a podcast. I was there was nobody there. James Carroll was working with me. Uh, he was a great director, and uh, we were doing it. It was like a release valve. I, I tell so many stories, especially this Johnny Key story. I become emotional because the only way I can remember or do these stories is I. I literally put myself in, in a focus that I'm redoing it. Yeah. So when I talk about it, I see his face. Yeah. I hear his voice. Mm. I see his smile. I, it drives me fucking nuts. Mm. It really does. Yeah. But now we're talking so many people who've heard this Johnny Keys story. You don't have to tell it. What no, I, like, I, but I want to interrupt you. Anyway. Yeah, let me interrupt you. Because what I think is funny, what you confuse the shit out of me, Sammy. Because... The fucking guy, I'm kissing my girl last night. He, I hear him go like this. He, I don't know. We're eating dinner. And I give my girl a kiss and I just hear him go, oh. I'm like, this fucking guy is being moved by my love affair with my girl. He's going, uh, he kind of like, oh, that's so sweet. Mm. And he tells stories where he's really emotional. Now he's doing this series. He's got five episodes coming out and uh, it's called Salvatore. And the, the director's like, listen, Sammy, when you're going to kill the guy, you're going to be emotional. You're going to be really emotional. Oh, no. And he goes, he goes, no. he goes, I was there. I don't know if you know me, bro, yeah. but I don't get, I'm, I'll put a hole in your face and fucking ask to pass the salt. No, but so, also <laughs> sleep 10 hours. Like he, he had no oh, problem sleeping. Yeah, sleeping, take a nice <laughs> long, he just sleep like a baby. I said to you, I go, I go, but Sammy, does that make you a sociopath? He goes, I don't think so. <laughs> no, You're just a so. fucking confusing you know what it was, guy. I did a thing, I did a gig in Tennessee. Uh, there was a big sh a show we did in, uh, and everything, and then we went to dinner with a whole bunch of fairly wealthy guys, and they were paying to sit and talk and have dinner. So I was eating spaghetti and had a spoon and the fork and I'm twirling the pasta. Rich and guys this, talking your ears off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Sounds this like one rich guy from England says, uh, "I'd like to ask you a question." All right, and I'm twirling. He says, "Tell me how you felt at, right after the murder. How, the, what kind of feelings did you have after you killed someone?" I think that might be a murder. Yeah. So I said, well, and I stopped twirling. I said, I'll tell you this way. I could turn around right now, put a bullet right in your fucking head and blow your fucking head wide open and you fall on the floor. I'm going to call the waiter. I'm going to tell the waiter, get this out of here and uh, clean it up. And bring me some Parmesan And go cheese. right back into twirling my, yeah. My, yeah. my pasta and, and put it in my mouth. Yeah. The whole table of rich guys, yeah. they all busted out laughing. <laughs> Even the English guy, he said, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> that's so cool. But I, you know, for me, it's like, I asked him, I go, if you, like, uh, we ever religious, obviously. He's like, no, I'm not. No, how could you be? You know, do you ever think about what, if, uh, what are you going to say to God if you, <laughs> you die and all of a sudden it's like, oh, fuck. You know, I hate to get into God conversation, but what am I going to say to him? I'm going to say, bro. You know, come on, you bro, made bro, me, come on, you bro. You made me, you make lions and you make lambs. You make these things and you have control and power over it. You made me. Yeah. You couldn't have stopped me. Yeah. 
And whatever's going to happen to me is going to happen to me, I would tell them. But there's so many young little kids dying of cancer and different oh, yeah. things yeah, yeah, yeah. and being raped and yeah. molested. And yep. I mean, it's been uh, couldn't you have stopped fun. some of that yeah. shit? Yeah. yeah. You could have made a sign here in front of everybody that maybe would change a whole bunch of people's lives. Mm. Not after they're dead, while they're alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the guy comes. I, I believe in God because there's a lot of things. I mean, oh, oh, I don't know how we all started, how life started, uh, and uh, we all believe in God in all kinds of different religions. Right. And I'm gonna, I got to make this straight now because there'll be people hating on me who are in different religions. But when I went to prison uh, in one part. In 2004, they took away smoking. I didn't smoke for 13 years. And I went into one of these units. I wasn't in the hole no more. And the Indians had a ceremony. They had this big blanket wrapped around, looking like a little bit of a teepee, and they could smoke. It's a religious thing for them. Are you talking like Native American? Native American Indians. Feathering. And yes. And so I, I, I went to them. I said, could I join this group? Because I wanted yeah. to smoke. Hell yeah. Because you want to smoke? Yeah. I, I, that's re the real reason. I'm being honest. How about the real his reason. face paint on just so yeah. he gets smoke? Just so he gets yeah. naked. So, yeah. No, there's no smoke paint. There's just a religious thing for them. Yeah. Mm. So uh, he said, if the chaplain allows it in the federal system, you could change your religion. So I went to the, the unit manager. I went to the chaplain, and they made me a Native American Indian. <laughs> so I, mean, I went yeah. into it, and I was smoking and passing the pipe and stealing some tobacco so I could roll it, bring it back to the cell. When the guard Hell passes, yeah. I light it up at night and smoke. No, but I got to respect honor. their religion. We had to sit through they it. They do have a beautiful religion, a road. It's a path to God. They believe in God just like everybody else. Right. I had another group of friends who were Wiccas. Wiccans. What'd you say? Wiccans. 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 Oh. It's like a nature <laughs> pagan religion. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he said, Sammy, you're not a Native American Indian. Why don't you come and join with us? And I joined with them. And I learned this. What I learned in prison is that every single religion, Muslim, Jews, Catholics, Christians, you name it, they have a path to God. We all believe in God. Why are we all fighting? The path For different. money. Yeah. Oh. For money. All the religions are bullshit. I mean, it's for money. And you go in a path. That's their path to God. Mm. And I don't care whose path goes where. And some of the places I believe it, I like the, the, the pagan religion because they have, they believe in, they're the only religion that has the woman, goddess of the moon, the water, and the earth, god of the forest and the mountain. The woman is more important than the man. Why? She obviously needs a man, but she creates life. life right. Yeah. She right. Be creates life. She, she's more They're important. Progressive of you. They have a season. Yeah. yeah. There is. There's a progressive thing about Sammy. He'll order a a vanilla latte with a cinnamon sprinkle. I'm like, I'm dying. Oh, uh, if I was I, the burrito, I'm like, is that Sammy the, the Bull? I'm not putting the sprinkles on. The shit in the world, like Sammy the Bull, who's like. I'll get a swirl, get the caramel swirl with the. <laughs> no, for the barista, I'm like, ah, uh, I'm not getting yeah, Sammy the yeah, Bull caramel. Yeah, yeah. I want some, I want no, some sprinkles. I refuse to give Sammy a bowl of fucking pu pumpkin latte. The fucking guy yeah. recognized me. He goes, Callan, all right, man, wow. I'm like, yeah, this isn't my fucking drink. <laughs> like, this isn't Sammy the Bull. Uh, this is Sammy the Bull's drink. Sammy yeah. the Bull got the latte with almond milk. <laughs> Mine's the black coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you're I such learned, a walking. That's you're what I learned about religions. I, I listen. I have. I wear a lot of different hats. So, and, uh, but uh, lattes, I like those. As long as it works for you. Well, Frappe, look, Frappe. he's got, oh, wow. got he's he's a milkshake. When, is it, when can we see this TV show you're doing? This comes out July 6th. Now, um, and you're acting in it. You're, you're, he, the I'm guy's literally an actor. It's like what John Gotti always wanted to do. Uh, where he's micing up to, last night, yesterday, on the, we're on the pier, and he goes, and then people are right, Sammy, they recognize him. Girls are taking pictures with him and stuff. And he just he starts laughing. What's up? He goes, 
It's just unbelievable. John Gotti, this is all he ever wanted. This is all he ever wanted. And I wanted the exact opposite. I was always hiding yeah, in the didn't, shadows. You didn't want the attention. No. And he goes, no. now I'm a fucking, like, basically everybody wants a piece of me. He's got meetings right after this. He's got meetings with big Hollywood producers but, but right I, now. But I yeah. think Imagine you now I, I win any kind of an award. So it's got me thinking, what the fuck would you say or do? Oh, Hollywood's going to be clapping. Oh. I owe this to John Gotti. <laughs> 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 if he didn't fuck Crap. me, I would have never been there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. But is, is, did, would you ever think, Sammy, like, it's cra whose idea was there for you to start the podcast? I think it's so dope that guys like you or even guys in different fields like Tim Kennedy or Jocko, you know, who are special forces guys, they have an outlet now where they can tell these stories. I, it's a special skill set. Yep. And I think one of the things that makes you special, obviously your history in the mafia, but your your memory is in, impeccable. It's unbelievable. It's yeah. better than mine. Yeah, it's unbelievable. You know, I, I have a guy who was on, he did a video. He said, Sammy is lying because he told a story about the stairs creaking, the guy who wore a red shirt. It's 40 years ago. <laughs> Nobody can remember that. He's lying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. No, yeah, here's what I want him to do. Here's the idea. I want him to fucking get up, get together with uh, some other gangsters from the old days, get together once a month or whatever it is, and tell stories or play cards oh, like and a, tell a, stories. Dude, a, a mafia fight companion? That's correct. Yeah. Ooh. That's correct. How about that? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yes, I Wouldn't think it's great. Cool? We sit, yeah, not even once a other. month, we yeah. can do it once a week. <laughs> yeah. We're sitting down. We're playing cards. We're joking. How we're many clowning. people tune into that? We're just we're wow. just being like we were in the past, talking about broads, talking about drinking. Talking, oh man, you know, I love I'm, when you guys talk about girls. I'm, I'm in. Yeah. Listen, you know, a friend, Mike Stymie was running a phone company. He goes to see this captain's girlfriend. She has this company, so he's putting a pitch on. And he puts the picture onto her and everything. He comes back and he talks to us. Unbeknownst to us, we're caught on tape. So he shows a picture. And I say, <laughs> she's got a gorgeous fucking ass, bro. Yeah. So we're joking like that, what she looks like and this and that and the other thing. It's a captain's wife. It's, it's, it's his girlfriend. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and he's a serious dude. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know how. They let him know, the feds, about this conversation. Oh, no. Well, they're trying to cut. And now he's talking to me. He says, I don't know who the fuck did this. Miss Mike, go, who would do this? <laughs> so I said, bro, yeah, it's <laughs> <That's> horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. But, but I got to tell you the truth, bro. The ass part, I think that was me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, who said she has a wagon on her? That's offensive. <laughs> the legs, I think that was Stymie. <laughs> so he's not cool about it? You know, what do you want us to do, cool. man? Yeah, I said, she's beautiful. Oh, oh, good for you. You. Tell, Nobody <laughs> said something negative. No. I mean, tell I mean, a story about how, <laughs> how you have this, this girl comes up to him, and she goes like this. She goes, I've always wanted to have sex with a, with a little wise guy. Because I like a little guy who's a who's a gangster. I've always wanted to fuck a, a small gangster. How so long ago is this? He's oh, sitting there yeah, and, he is and, and he goes like this. He goes, she probably had a crush on yeah, Joe listen, Pesci. No, listen yeah, to this. So, no? Yeah, Before so Joe she, Pesci. I mean, so I said, listen, they, I don't think they get much smaller than me. But <laughs> <laughs> So we go and we're fucking around. And, and a day later, two days later, Sammy, you know who that was? You were with? No. Who? Sally Dogs' niece and another guy. Uh, the, his uncle uh, is a captain. And now it's, it's they, oh, they, they, yeah. I, oh, my. Oh my. There's no MySpace or something. That's, that's a death penalty. Yeah, that can be know. the death penalty. I mean, there's no Facebook so, back then. Yeah, I don't but, fucking I mean, know. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I went to Sally Dogs and I said, Sally, bro, I got to talk to you. And uh, uh, I was in the bar. I told him the story a little bit. And uh, I wind up. Don't tell me, he says, uh, I forgot her name now, but yeah, 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 I won't want to. Don't worry about it, the whole neighborhood fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's like, Whew, cool. Phew. But I really didn't know who she was. Uh, how could you? To. Yeah. Well, sometimes you're supposed to know those things. I mean, if you knew, if you didn't know, they told me. If you yeah. knew, you'd be in some trouble. Knew. Yeah, yeah. If you know, would that be a capital it, offense? Know. Would you die for that or would you just get beaten up? For Not that? a girlfriend, right? Mm. Wife is off. Well, <clears throat> Which one we're talking about? No, I'm saying if it's somebody's niece or something like that. Well, if you intentionally oh, no. did that, you see, this is another thing that separates us from gangs. 
We have to have some moral and thinking and power. And, we, it, it, you know, it, it, may dis- it may not be a killing thing uh, that far down, maybe, but it, it's going to disgrace you. It's, you're going to look like a piece of you shit. You look frowned upon. In other words, yeah. you know that, bro. It's, it, you know, and it's, it's like, I'm in you can't life. trust him. It's like, he's, friends, your, he's never, your close friend, he's yeah. your partner, and everything yeah. like that. So you go out one night and you, you this girl, and you find out it's his yeah, niece. No. But you say, he's my friend, he's my partner, he's my brother. Yeah. You're not going to do it. No, no, I mean, I'd call no. you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he, if he says, go ahead, do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, no, I mean, I'd be like, hey, you, you, so, that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You let me know, dip my toe. Like, let me get my beak wet. <laughs> let me beak wet. Let me let me wet my I beak a little Sammy bit. Sammy told me I'm good. I love it. Let me wet my beak. That's my beak is dry. Time. Sammy <laughs> said I'm good. You talked to him? No. Sammy said that to you. Yeah, Sammy said <laughs> Fuck, he's in Arizona. Sammy gave me a goal. Sammy said Sammy, Sammy gave, gave me, me the goal. That's what we're gonna do from now on. I got I got nah, called Sammy. Sammy. He gave me the go. Sammy gave me the green light, man. I had to zoom with him before he would come out. Intimidating. I, I, yeah, I mean, his assistant was like, he's got to meet you. He's fucking in the back right there. I'm like, Mr. Gravano, thank you so much. Mr. Gravano, I, I believe you'd be a samurai if you'd been born in the in, in feudal yeah, Japan. Guy, yeah. I'm doing whatever the fuck I can. I've, I watched your whole, you know, I gave him the whole thing. Oh, I, when he told me you're coming on, I, I mean, <laughs> I got my black belt and all your all your stuff. The yeah. Gotti, all that, man. I read yeah. all the books, everything. Yeah. Yep. I think you've, you're yeah. the one guy who got fucked over. You're one of the first guys that the media portrayed it because John Gotti was so beloved. But he also didn't play by the rules. And you've, you're quoted saying this, is you guys were playing chess. You just beat him. He snitched on you. You snitched on him. And he broke the code many of times before. Here, I also I said, think his recklessness is yeah, what fucked you guys. But yeah. here's, here's what I said. I said, he was playing checkers. I was playing chess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I checkmated him. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so to the fullest extent. Why, well, you know, when you yeah. came out with this, in other words, when you did this, all my life, I've been asked to cooperate. I got pinched all my life. I never did. But you want to know the, the other part is that after I cooperated with the government, so let's put that on the table, I cooperated against the government in nine or ten cases to get guys out of prison. So the government don't like me either. Yeah. <laughs> they're so good, this cocksucker. Was, but no one's telling that story. So no, no. They're told, not telling that But there's yet. guys out there who know it, believe me, and it's out there. Oh, for sure. In the underworld, it's out there. People yeah. know those stories. Yeah. And I have people asking me for favors all the time, people who now, I shouldn't even say this, but are active and to asking me for favors, you know, you know, could you don't mention this or back yeah. up, you know, and I do. But, but are, there, are there guys that you would run into today from the old life that you would have a problem with that you, could, you would fight or just, or you guys would have to cross the street? Gotti Jr. If, if I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know about Gotti Jr., but I, I don't know. If what they would do, but there's a couple of guys that I would like to sit with, yeah, in, in a room, me and him, and have a talk, yeah, no, have, have a, a sit real down. talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the yeah. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a real talk. But but I but I think too, when you go back to Gotti, like think how many times you saved his ass when you rigged the th- jury, rigged the jury. Think about going through all that work three times. The, the Teflon Dawn. It's like well, no, it's. No, it was this guy, the, it was, Teflon, the Teflon's here. See, and they, you know what no it is like about with it. Junior or the son and all other people who talk? They can't get out of that because it's not something I'm making up. The government hated me for what I did. Oh, yeah? So, and yeah, of course. They, they, you think they like that I rigged all these trials? Yeah. And they know it factually now. Yeah. See, like they got, the, the one of the cases, the guy got, uh, you know, he got three years. Yeah, he gave him three years. Uh, he for, took 60K, like a, right? Yeah, really? that, that guy. When I hear 60K, I'm like, what? Yeah. John Gotti's going to go to prison for life? All you took was 60K? No, I was getting him a job. Um, yeah, I, got got a job. I was getting him a job for 75000 a year, yeah, and he was going to be our friend. But anyway, that guy, when he got found guilty, the feds immediately <laughs> talked to him, and he cooperated and told the whole thing word for word. Oh, wow. So they knew I wasn't lying. Yeah. So these things here, yeah, they, they, they verified all of yeah. these things, and they said, this fucking Sam, he was relentless yeah the things he was doing rigging cases bribing people threatening people i was doing everything what sucks for the government is your memory so impeccable and so good is you can go through everything step by step so i'll listen to other mafia podcasts whatever they go sammy says this i don't know if i believe i'm like you morons weren't there the problem is sammy's fucking memory so good yeah you've told the you can tell when a person's lying when the story's changing, you know, it's hard to keep up with a lot. Well, that's what I told him. I said, I, said, I believe every record. word you've ever said. I believe every fucking word he's ever said. The other guys, I don't. 
I don't. I, I'm not interested in talking to the other gangsters. I'm really not. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like a lot of those guys. It's just I don't like what they did. I don't like. How I they don't did. know much about. It. Yeah, I, I, but I listen to them, and I'm always like, oh, these guys. This guy just sounds. You can tell when they're self-serving. Yeah. Like they're they're making themselves out to be a hero or something. And you're like, oh, I don't fucking like this guy. You, I told you your stories are are structured in this fucking judeo-christian ethic it's like but you were raised italian conservative family bensonhurst that's where my mother was born and raised that whole side of her family right in bensonhurst that that culture is a very conservative there's a right way there's a wrong way mm -hmm. there's right. a catholic way Blue you don't fuck yeah. around yeah you didn't step out of those mm -hmm. those even with the mafia like if, if cosa nostra they didn't kill the family where yeah. these cartels go wrong is they kill everybody. They don't last. It destabilizes. There was such a stable, predictable... Yeah. Like my grandfather used to always say to me, he'd say, they'll never bother you, Brian, as long as you don't, don't fuck with them and don't, don't get involved with them. But if you're on the outside, they're not going to bother you. Now, that can be interpreted differently because if I have a business, you guys are going to shake me down, right? No, no, no. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean... Mm -hmm. We let a lot of things go. We don't go. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. I was with Paul Castellano in the house of a b bunch of guys. I came in a little late and I was sitting there. He, Paul Castellano, for anybody listening, was the boss was of the boss. boss. Right. Big he's boss. a businessman. And then, yeah, yeah, and he yeah. was smart. He so killed. anyway, he's looking at television and there was a strike with the garbage. And he's looking at television and he says, look at that. There's the news people. There's piles of piles of garbage everywhere, right? And they're on strike. So he says, get in touch with Jimmy Brown. He was running the, the association and the union for this. And get him over here. What the fuck is this? Jimmy Brown, a little while they went and go get him. He comes into the house and he says, Jimmy, look at this, bro. What the fuck are we animals, bro? Tell them to pick that fucking garbage up from the hospitals, from the schools, from the old age homes. We'll win the fucking strike. What is everything in money? Pick that shit up. So he didn't... He didn't no, there was a value system. There's a value. He yeah. cared about the neighborhood. Mm. He cared about children, hospital, old people. He cared. He cared. And wanted to win and wanted money. Well, they the say money. the downfall of mafia might have been the breakdown of family values. There was an article written about that, which is interesting. Like the breakdown of the discipline when drugs got involved and all the that drugs, shit. Yeah. Like Henry Hill lucky Luciano, was, you know, these things, never drugs. Right. Never, never drugs. You knew Carlo Gambino. No, right? there was drugs with that. In the old days, it was legal. They, they did drugs. He might not. He, he, was, he was, lucky Luciano was more of a pimp. Mm. Yeah, women he had was books. Yeah. How yeah. much? Did, what was it? Oh. What was the? What oh. industry did you guys make the most money on? Construction. <laughs> Construction's a big monster, car, you know. Thing you're building high rises. They're fifty. Back then, they're fifty, sixty, seventy million dollars. Now they're two hundred. And you would get how much for a, for a yard of uh, cement? We were getting two dollars per yard. Yeah, yeah. Not you the, give two dollars back to the mafia. Yeah, but but I, I heard too. Tell me if this is wrong. Time maybe uh, I'm speaking out of turn. But I heard uh, Trump was the one guy who couldn't get shaken down. When he's building shit in New York, he was surrounded by other dudes, and he, he took he, he knew like the the way. Well, right? well he didn't really so he want to get involved. Yeah, but he wouldn't. He paid he really? paid the mm -hmm. price in a way without coming front. In other words, yeah. he he was up in his tower. He had ex FBI agents who was his security, so you couldn't really push too much with him. Smart. But when the yeah, but, but when the when the prices came up, or you wanted to fuck with him, we had the unions associates. We could fuck with him. He paid the the vig, more or less, but not face to face. You right. don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to come face to face. He was pretty smart about it. And at one point, I was trying to get in his pockets and uh, couldn't get there. And I says, "Fuck him." Too dangerous. You know, it's too dangerous. Risk, yeah. Let's keep doing what we're doing. This is too dangerous. He's got FBI right wrapped around him. So if we keep pushing, we're going to go to jail. Yeah. yeah. That's you know, impressive. Right? That's impressive. Yeah. Trump is impressive in that sense. He was street. He's street but, smart. But I was, he was street smart. Yeah. Because yeah. he, knew, he knew the game. He knew what was going on. And he stayed pushed back. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing about him with other politicians. He came up in the New York construction business. You got to be a rough fucking dude. Yeah, You're dealing dog. with the roughest yeah. of the rough. You're dealing with criminals. You're dealing with everybody. Right. 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 
So, so unions, yes, every so fucking thing. Now you're know. dealing with the Bush, some Bush, Jeb Bush, you know, I who grew up like an about aristocrat. That, that you're gonna love. I, this whole thing with Trump. A, a, a woman, a news reporter, calls me up, and uh, hey, Sammy, how are you? This is going back a little bit when they were he, they're hating on him. He was the president, so she says, uh, um, Sammy, you were a powerhouse in the fucking '80s in construction, the unions, and everything. Yeah, she says that Trump was a big builder in New York at that time. Yeah, come on, tell me something. You know something about him. Come on, just between me and you, nobody will know. Yeah, journalist. Yeah, <laughs> journalist. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, listen, I really don't know too much about him. He's a builder, and I never did anything really with him. But you know, I don't know. And I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to get in the middle of whatever. She's begging me, begging me. Please, Sammy, I mean, no one will know. It's just something between me and you. I just, I just want to know. It's between me and you? <laughs> yeah. You'll never tell anybody. No. Okay. I wanted a job a drywall job on one of his buildings, and uh, I had to do things to get it done. What? I got a friend of mine, very beautiful girl, Shahoka. So I got her and Trump and me, and we had a menage a trois <laughs> together. She's writing it down. And I got the job. She's on the other end. Tell me her name. I said, what the fuck is the difference her name? You told me you're not going to tell nobody. What's the difference? <laughs> you, Trump, yeah. and yeah. so So she says, come on, Sammy, tell me her name. And I start laughing a little bit. I couldn't take it. No, yeah. So she says, you fuck, you're lying. <laughs> you're lying. <laughs> so I said, Wait a listen, a I told you, I don't know what he did. But one thing I could tell you, I will never have a menage a trois with me, <laughs> Trump, and abroad. <laughs> that ain't never oh, happened. I can't get up looking at that fucking guy <laughs> yeah. with that bad He's hair. Giant ass. That, that yeah. warm cheese for yeah. a body. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. Spray tan. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. that was my Trump story yeah. far. <laughs> That's fucking great. Yeah, but they're searching. Man. I know. It's just, it's very, it's very surreal for me to, uh, to have, have you here. Just having grown up in the 80s in New York City when you were at the height of your powers. And I, again, I told you, I used to eat, I used to always eat dinner at Cafe Sorrento and the Raven Eye Club was two doors down. So I would see, you know, when you're a young man, you'd, I'd see some of, the, some of your knuckle breakers, some of those guys built like him come out. One time, I never forgot, I'm eating with my buddy and I see two guys come out of the Raven Eye Club, big, just barrel chested dudes with suits and, and collars, no tie. And they're doing this, and they were just walking, and they looked like they were going somewhere to do something terrible. But it was like this energy, this dark fucking right. energy. As it went, I was like, God, that's a whole different. In, world. In, yeah, what's yeah. The, where's what's the? But that? those knuckle breakers, they they they're in a disadvantage because you know who, like, it was like Too I got into an argument with a, a Chinese guy or a Japanese. I don't know what the fuck he was, an Asian guy, and all of a sudden, before we get ready to really tumble. He, Whoa! I hear all kinds of fucking noises, yeah. like in hand movements. I said, "Fuck this! Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot this guy. Yeah. I'm not gonna fight him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the hell." I don't want to kick in the face. So it's like that movie, and the same thing with a real big guy. If you're yeah. real big and you know, I'm gonna fuck that, I'm shoot, yeah. fighting this guy. I'm yeah. shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Did you work with the triads? Did you guys ever deal with the triads, the Chinese triads? Uh, I, I dealt with uh, the Chinese people a few times. Not the triads. The triads, I believe, uh, or uh, were they the Vietnamese group? I think the triads. Was, triad goes for like when you're in the. So if you're a Chinese mafia, you only know you only know two other guys. So you only deal with two other guys. This guy only deals with two other guys. This guy only deals with two other guys. So that they they. They, there's no chain of command necessarily. Like it's all like he only knows two guys. This guy only knows two guys. I think that was the idea. They tried to create this weird, you know. I, I would never know. want to be in that gang because it'd be so fucking confusing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't even know who you talking about. Yeah, how do we know? Well, but they found the head of the triad. He was a guy. He, you know, the the leader of the Chinese 
triad or whatever the mafia guy they they, they say was was sell he would do a food cart he would he would make food he was in Chinatown. Yeah, sounds like a terrible guy. Yeah, oh, they, they, they were, were cool. Just, Listen, I know John I, Johnny Khan was was one of the bosses in the Chinese mafia Johnny Khan, uh -huh. and uh, I was in prison with him. When you go over the bridge into Chinatown, you ever see that big big tower? Yep, that was his building. Oh wow! I did time with him. He hated John, by the way, in prison. Hated him with a fucking passion. And uh, so, <laughs> and and I used to play cards with him all the time. This Johnny Khan, and, uh, and the best thing story when he was telling me, he says, "Sammy, American government no good." I said, "Yeah, tell me about it." He, he said, "You know, my wife got arrested. She's in the woman's detention." Yeah, yeah, I know. So when the bitches, they just arrested my girlfriend. She in the same room. <laughs> she in the same thing. <laughs> so I said, your wife Cat and your fight. girlfriend yeah. are in the same oh, prison shit. together? Yeah. Holy shit. No, they're going to kill him. Yeah, yeah. But he was, he was fucking cool. Matter of fact, he knew a prince or somebody in China who gave him permission. He lived in the mountains with a, with a, with a crew. Wow. Uh, I mean, an army, or just about. But he gave him permission to cooperate about the drug situation to, so he can get out. Oh, and then cool. leave the country and go up in the mountains over there with him. Damn. That's so cool. when I, I was in, he was telling me about it. So he says, if you, of course, I had a plan to break out when I was in prison the first time because I knew we were going to lose. So he says, if you get out, I know you got plans. If you get out, I give you my blessings. You go there. You're living there in the mountains. They'll never touch you. I'll be there someday. He pointed to John. He says, if John comes, he come there, he never leave. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to die. Him. He would have killed him. He hated did, him. Did you feel any type of way, uh, Sammy, when uh, John passed away from uh, throat cancer? I did, uh, absolutely. I, and, and we were attached at the hip. And if you don't have feelings a little bit, I, I, I think something, you're a psychopath. Yeah. But uh, it, it did bother me that he died like a fucking animal in prison. I don't want to see anybody die like that. You know, I could hate a guy, but it, there's a limit like that. I got exploding about torture and yeah. how people. I mean, there's a limit to what you want to do to somebody to get even. Even if you want to kill somebody, I, I don't believe in torture and shoot him in the fucking head and get it over with and it's over with. And, I mean, you know, you're going to torture the guy like like Roy DeMeo and people like that did. What are you, sick or what? Yeah, was, bad, you know, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Really nice. yeah. What did he die, 55 years old? How old was he, 60? No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I think he was, no, he's four and a half years older than me, John. Okay. So he was in his 60s, I believe. Yeah. I don't remember exactly, but he was 61. in his 60s. 61. Um, 61? Not that old. Yeah. No, no, he wasn't known. Look at Sammy the Bull. Yeah. <laughs> you were the one that everybody would talk about, though. Especially when it was now, there's his son, and there's all the Gotti clan. So crazy. Yeah. Henry Hill. Carlo Gambino was a was a fucking gem. Smart. Really? Yeah. Oh, smart, talented guy. And 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 a legit businessman. Look at that nose. Yeah. A legit businessman. That's Ooh, the that, crazy. You know. So we used to tough. say, well, who knows? The <laughs> nose knows. That's the craziest nose I've ever seen. In my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's tough. My Lord, that's a nose. But he was a great. You know, I went there. I was young. I wasn't made, and I went up there. It's just that I don't even know why the fuck they took me there. But he came in. He got up. Hey, what's his name? Sammy. 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 You want a cup of black coffee? He was so like really? grandfatherly. Like yeah. took me over, gave me a cup of. You know, I hear nice things about you, but you know, banging my yeah. own. But but just he gave me such a good vibe. But I had a, a theory. I said to Sammy, in. I said some part of it because we had such a good time yesterday. I'm like, wow, you forget, you forget he was who the fuck he was. I, like I, I, I said, I feel like part of the reason you stayed alive and survived that life is because people liked you, because there was a camaraderie and people considered you a friend or something. I mean, people looked out for you. You'd get tipped off on shit. You know, is that is there any truth to that? You think or not? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of times. Nicky Scarfo was one guy. I won the war for him. The whole world knows that. Nicky Scarfo, one night I came home, 9.30, 10.30. Late at night, I was, and I had a tough day. I was exhausted. 
and I get a call. Nikki would like to see you in Atlantic City. That was two hours and 15, 20 minutes away. And two hours and 15, 20 minutes to come back. It's fucking five hours and he wants to talk to me. I says, bro, is it important? He wants to see you. Say, it's important, I guess. I'm all right. I tell him I'm on my way. And I went. I went out there and I walk. They took me into a, the, a casino. He's not allowed in there. But I went to the elevator, took me up in the apartment, the hotel, and I went in the room. And uh, <clears throat> I doing Nick, uh, what's up? He says, are you having trouble with this fucking bum? What bum? Who? Now he's a boss. Now he won the war, he's a boss. It's after the Johnny Keys hit. Uh, you're a boss, John. I said, bro, don't talk to me like that, bro. He's my friend. He's my boss. And I don't, you want me to talk behind a guy's back? You really want to put me in that position? I'm the underboss. I mean, you really want to do that? Oh, Sammy, I, I know where you're coming. But I, I don't feel right. He, I've been coming through you from before the war. All the, all the time. Now he told me at a meeting he wanted me to come through Joe Bush away from you. Why the fuck would he want to do that? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, he knows I'm doing a lot of things. I'm tired. Maybe he's looking at I don't know. But I understood. This, I'm, you want to take me away from handling a union bullshit? Yeah. That's one thing, taking me away from a boss that will like this. He's right. But I'm not, I didn't go there. I said, I don't know. He says, Sammy, me and you have blood on our hands together. We were in the war. You won the war for me, bro. If you have a problem, I got your back. And, and think, why would he do this? Think. You're a smart guy. Um, well, that advice, you know, I'll think. I'll think about it. But uh, Eddie says, I apologize that, you know, if I offended you. You didn't offend me, but I don't want to, you know what I mean? He is my boss. That could almost start a war, couldn't it? That, I mean, that's kind of sacrilege, well, right? Yeah, well, well, he's saying he'll, if I start a war, he's going to go on my side. Yeah, yeah. he's going to have his back. Oh, I you got know, you. he's going to yeah. have my back. He's yeah. basically he what he's saying, so I'm not going to say nothing to put him in a posi weird position. Were you right tempted? Like no, to put him in a position, absolutely not. No, you tempted to, to, to say to Nikki, let's take John out and I'll take no, him. No, 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 no. You didn't really want to be a boss. No, no. Too much too no. much of a target on your back. Well, I, I, I wouldn't care if there was an old time. I, in other words, if he handled himself well, he could stay as the boss. I, I have no complaints being the underboss. I was making a ton of money. Everything was good. I yeah. Mean, uh, but um, so anyway, he uh, told me that and uh, I answered that way. But it left a little thing on the way home. I'm thinking, why would he want to take him to go to Joe Bush rather than me? A boss going to a captain and directly to him. Why are you bypassing me? I'm the underboss. And I made this guy the boss. Me and him are like this, which he doesn't know 100% of our relationship. So I think maybe he underestimated that a little bit. And it was a little bit of a bad call on his part, but that's how Nikki took it. He didn't trust John. But would you now? Would didn't you because like you and John were so close? Would you go tell John this or no? No, I'd start a war. You wouldn't tell him. <laughs> yeah. No, because otherwise I would start a war. It's not. It's not a war. I may get the white guy whack. Why would a guy yeah. my, uh, who's helping me? Right. Who's worried about you know, me? Why would I put right, him on right, his right. Why would I say yeah, something stupid? But in a way, though, not telling John in that situation is also can get you killed. I, I don't give a fuck about getting killed. I mean, if he's right, maybe I'm going to get killed. I wouldn't give him up, period. Yeah, I got you. Mm. It was, it was a, it's it was off a, the table. It's off the he's table. My, in my corner. If when, I you, just, when, when you got out of jail, what's the one thing after all that time that you noticed about the world? What was, what was scary? What was different about the world? The, f the first time? Yeah, like when you came out, now you've been after in jail John? for 20 years. Yeah, after John, what year is no, 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 I'm talking the second time. When you're in jail for 20 years... Now you come out into 18, society. 18. 18. 18. What was that? What was that like for you? Like, what was the? 
Was th- were things moving too quickly? It was the weirdest quickly? thing in the world because when I came out, most of this, did, I, I went in in February of 2000. There was none of these fucking cell phones. The computers were not like they are now. Cars were total. Everything looked like a bubble back to me. It looked like the cars. I, I mean, I, not seeing cars for 18 years. I mean, I've seen a picture or whatever. But to see them in reality, I couldn't tell the difference between a Ford and a Cadillac and a, and a Mitsubishi or anything I saw. It all, they all looked a little alike, unless I saw a tag on it yeah. or something. So yeah. not seeing these things or not dealing with these things for uh, just about 18 years, it's a whole fucking trip. I, I remember I went with, uh, I'm not sure if it was my ex-wife or my uh, daughter, we went shopping and coming out with a car, and a guy came running, like, towards me. And I turned around, like, almost wound up cracking him. So my daughter, oh, it was my wife, whichever. What the fuck are you doing? The guy's running to his car. I, bro, I just came out of prison. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, I'm still in on prison. Edge, on edge. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm in prison. A guy comes running up on you like that in prison, you're gonna guard against it. You yeah. know, prison is weird. So it's a, I, I, I still have my prison hat yeah. on. Yeah, mentality. I, my mentality. I got. I need time to come back into society and and, and understand what's going on and what's happening. I mean. It'll it'll happen, but this guy just came fucking flying out of nowhere. It, you, I wasn't did, afraid of the mafia thing or yeah. anything like that. Did you go to your favorite restaurants? Did you go eat? Did you want to eat something good for the first time? Did you? There's anything you wanted to do that you hadn't done? Definitely eat. Yeah. And I don't fuck restaurants. My son cooks. He's a great chef. He's good. Yeah. He's tremendous. And I wanted him to make me some pasta, alavaca sauce, and stuff that he could make. He's a, he's a great cook. Some meatballs. Some. Da- I wanted to eat more than I wanted sex. Yeah. I, I, you know, I missed certain things about yeah. eating. And I needed to get regu- regulated again with life. Yeah. With people and, you know, just, and then I know i coming out with a label. He sent me the bull. He's dangerous and this and that. I'm coming out after 18 years. I didn't know, you know, how to act. Oh, well, you never, you never in a million years thought you'd be doing p- podcasts, TV shows. Those are dumbasses. Yeah. Right? No, no, I never thought this you in a million out, years. Food My stamps. wife was wanted to do a book. We worked on that a little bit. I, I wrote a little bit in prison for as a hobby. I, it didn't go anywhere. And then somebody approached her about a podcast. And she came to me and said, would you, they want you to do a podcast, they're asking me to do it, they don't want to talk to you direct, and, but uh, I need to have your rights if if you're going to do it. So I said, oh, I'll do it. God, do it. And then my son put me on, later, put me on Facebook without my knowledge. I'm starting yeah. to get 14,000 calls. I said, what is going on here, bro? Why are these people calling me? I put you on Facebook. Oh. And then he put me on YouTube. And then they start explaining to me what's going on and what I could do and stuff like that. I'm glad they did, man. I know. It's such a fascinating yeah. story. I'm it's great, man. It, yeah. we, we appreciate it, yeah, man. Yeah. It's this great has you been, came on, Sammy. This has been great, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, we so had a good time That's yesterday. what I did. And, I, and now I love it because, like, now I'm not really an act. I act, but I'm, you know, I'm not a, I don't consider myself an actor, but I am a producer. You were good last night. Yeah. We reenacted a scene from night. Black Mask. He was very good. Yeah. And, uh, I think I consider myself a producer and I'm doing things. I couldn't find a better thing. Just like right here, right now. Honestly speaking, I couldn't find a better group of people. I'm so fucking comfortable right now. Yeah, we got a good gig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm fe- good people Yeah. and I'm very comfortable with it. I'm comfortable in my skin. I talk. I just say things. I'll give you an example. Like I'm so natural with things. At the end of the show, when I was first doing these podcasts and everything, I says, oh, videos, adios, motherfuckers. <laughs> Everybody stopped, my whole team. You can't call the whole country motherfuckers. I'm, I'm can, not though. calling them. Yeah. I no. said, well, we'll edit it out. Leave it in. 
Yeah, it's my sign-off, man. It's my sign-off. Yeah. Now we have T-shirts, adios, motherfucker. <laughs> Cups, adios, motherfucker. <laughs> and every Spanish guy I think alive texts me, hey, motherfucker, yeah, what's yeah, up? I love it. Adios. I, I love think it. I well, made motherfucker with a legitimate word. They put you it. in a hole, you found your way out. Sam. Yeah, crush yeah. it, man. We're and so I glad enjoy you came what on. I'm yeah, doing. I'm, yeah. I, you know, like, like I said, I mean... In Charlie's Angels, we remember the three beautiful girls. I got three beautiful girls working for me. I call them Sammy's Angels. Yep. And I'm going to do a little video in the middle of the whole three of them, and whatever. <laughs> yeah. So Just to show the boys back in jail. Yeah. Life yeah. is tough. And you know, I took yeah. I on, Life on, is tough. On, the, on, the, on the dock over there. He's got these three, three, three blondes. Three blondes. Like, like oh. the mother, a daughter, and another woman. And he's got them like this. He's like, hey, hey. And they're taking a picture. He goes, hey, fellas. Life is tough out here. I got the beach <laughs> yeah. in my legs. Yeah. Three beautiful blondes. Yeah. <laughs> Life is a bitch out here. Yeah. It's John Gotti's just rolling over <laughs> in his yeah. brain. Well, Sammy, Sammy the Bull, Thank Ravano. you enough, brother. Thank Thanks you, for coming on, man. Thank you yeah, so much. It's my coming. pleasure. I had a great time. And uh, really, Brian, I mean, you, I, the, the time I spent with you, I tell you, like, you know, I, I was 15 hours with Johnny Keys in a car. And I fell in love with him. I fell in love with you. It took two days, but <laughs> you and your family and your wife and your partners and friends, really, I, I, I've had a great time. I appreciate it. Really, really, really. Yeah, now we got. Now I got to kill you. <laughs> yeah. like so now it breaks it your heart to have to yeah, take. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna well, be. Well, I'll it's, do that in another video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna do that on Sammy's. YouTube. Sammy, I yeah. feel like you don't feel anything. But, but I feel like you're not feeling. Sammy doing the head. I thought you said you love yeah. me. Yeah. It's only it's business. Has to end. It's just business, yeah. Brian. It's nothing to do. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fighter in the Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> That's Yo, the whole plan. Well, Sammy, we love you, man. Sammy, you're the best, man. Yeah, best. Thank you. I'm gonna say my. Adios, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah! <laughs>